everyone, it's David Brayshaw from Backspindle Games. Today I'm going to give you a quick how to play of this new game, Dance of the Fireflies. Dance of the Fireflies is a simple but strategic 2 to 6 player card game where players take turns to bid with fireflies on flowers on a flower clock to win flowers to create the most beautiful flower beds. Hence they win the coveted title of the head gardener. During the game, players create flower beds by placing cards on the table in rows horizontally across the table. There's a scorecard on the table which allows them to see the bonuses they can get for different types of flower beds with different types of flowers. There are six different types of flowers, plus there are night blooms and day blooms. In a two to three player game, there are six cards around the flower clock in the middle. Basically, it's a sundial with a sun on one side and a moon on the other. However, in a 4-6 to six player game, this is increased to 8 cards. On a player's turn, they use these little fireflies to bid on flowers on the flower clock. However, half of the, the sundial in the middle has a moon on it, and the other half has got the sun on it. So you can only bid on the matching side that matches that flower, at the bottom of the card. This one, for instance, has a mix on it. This one has a mix and this one has a mix. But sometimes the cards will have day on them or night on them. When players bid, they bid on the left hand vacant space on the card, as long as it's legally allowed to do so, i.e. mix or night in this case. The next player on their turn will be able to bid in the adjacent space on that flower to try and outbid their opponent. However, that leaves final space, in this case, a sun space on the nighttime side of the sundial, so at this point it cannot be bid on. Unless, of course, you have one of the cards that gives you an exception. And the cards are the flower cards, because each of them has a special ability. Alternatively, on their turn, a player, instead of bidding on a flower, can take a flower from their hand, place it in one of their flower beds, but that sacrifices that firefly for the rest of the game. Play starts. The player with the Apprentice Gardener card will always start the game. The Apprentice Gardener card will move around from player to player depending which player has the least flowers on the table after every round. If two players have the same amount of flowers on the table, it moves to the next player with the same amount of low cards. In other words, if I have three and the other player has three, and I went on the last turn, and the other players have four or five, it will move to the other player with three cards. Let's look at the flower cards. The flower cards are six different colours. Okay, purple, yellow, red, blue, white, orange. Each player has a flower card which identifies the special ability of each of the six flowers. For instance, a purple flower adds a bonus plus one point. A white flower allows you to plant a firefly on any of the spaces on the flower clock, no matter if it's night or day, or at the first space or the second space. So these are very powerful. You get to use these flowers' abilities when you plant a flower in your garden. After each player has taken their turn and bid fireflies either on the flower clock or used them to plant flowers in their garden, the sundial is turned by the player with the apprentice gardener card. It's turned clockwise round to the next card. In this case, the sun symbol faces a card on this side with the moon on it. But there's no fireflies there so nothing happens it stays in the game on the other side the moon symbol now faces a card with the moon symbol at the top these fireflies need to be resolved the reason for resolving them is in case one of them is secretly a royal firefly and in this case none of them are so red will get their fireflies back blue their fireflies back and the red player can then plant this flower in a garden of their choice but not in a garden where they already have the same coloured flower. In this case, they would have to start a new flower bed because they already have a blue flower in their first flower bed. So they would have to start a second flower bed. At that point, the player does not draw up cards. They can use the special ability of this card that was planted in the flower bed and then the apprentice gardener card is passed to the player with the least amount of cards on the table to begin the next round. At that time, then, the vacant space is replaced by the top card 
from the potting shed. And the apprentice gardener player begins the next round. The second thing a player can do on their turn, whether they plant a flower directly in their flower bed with a firefly, or they plant it on the flower plot, is they can choose to discard a card from their hand to the compost heap and plant an additional firefly on the flower pot on a legal space night or day. In the same way, had they planted the first one on the flower clock, they then can plant a second firefly after they discard a card on an adjacent flower. One out of the seven fireflies each player has will have a little crown on the top of them. The crown symbol represents a royal firefly. The royals have much more power than your regular firefly. For instance, if blue plants secretly their firefly on the blue flower and then red plants their firefly on the red flower, the turn ends, the fireflies are revealed, the royal firefly of blue overpowers the red firefly of red. The royal is then set in the middle on the sundial for one round. The red firefly is returned to the red player but the blue player gets to take this card and add it to their flower bed and can use its special ability. In this case, it appears there's a red and a blue firefly on the flower again. This time when they're revealed, they're revealed both as royals. So at this point, neither player wins that flower. Both royals are removed to the center. The flower goes to the compost heap but if those players have a matching blue card in their hand, they can then plant it in their garden. Finally, if it's the end of the turn and the fireflies are revealed, blue has a royal firefly, red has a royal firefly, yellow has an ordinary firefly, it is seen that the two royals battle it out together. And while they're battling it out together, yellow wins the flower and steals it to their garden and gets their firefly back as well where they can also plant an additional flower of the same colour if they have one in a second flower bed. The final thing a player can do with the royal is a little bit of skullduggery. In this case, it looks like the red player is going to win the blue flower. The sun is going to move around to match the sun at the top of the card, and the, blue, the red player may have a royal firefly on there. So what the blue player is going to do is this, to sacrifice their royal firefly and put it in the sundial for one turn. That allows them to switch two cards. So they're going to switch this one with the orange one, like that. When the turn ends, the sundial turns. Now it's the orange one that is due to come off. And the red player's card is going to have to sit with two fireflies on it till the sundial does a full rotation. So basically he's lost the power of those two fireflies and possibly a royal. The maximum points a player can get for one flower bed is six different coloured flowers like this. However, they can add to those points, in this case, by having all these flowers are all day flowers. That's called a harmony bonus, and that gets an extra two points. If they're all night flowers, it's an extra four points. So there's various ways players can bump up their scores. An example of play. It's my turn. I choose to plant an orange flower in my garden and I have to sacrifice a firefly, checking carefully that it's not a royal, on that flower. The orange flower allows me to plant a second flower in the same garden, but obviously a different colour. So I choose this time to plant a white flower. The white flower special ability allows me to plant another firefly anywhere in the flower clock. So at this point in time, I'm going to plant it on another orange flower. And then I'm going to draw up. I draw up the top card. Ah, it's a weed orchid card. I haven't told you about that yet. They're a very special, powerful card. So at this point, the Weed Orchid card must, because there's no vacancy here, go into the greenhouse. Then I draw back up to three cards in my hand. Again, I've drawn another Weed Orchid card that goes in there as well. And finally, I've got three cards. None of them are Weed Orchid cards. Another example of play with respect to the Weed Orchid cards is when the sundial turns around to the next card with the sun on it, Blue, in this case, matches, wins the flower. There's already an orange flower in their garden, so they plant it in a new flower bed. It allows them to plant a second flower, and they plant a blue flower. 
The space has to be filled normally by a flower from the potting shed. In this case, it's filled first and foremost by an orchid. So the weed orchid card goes in there. Weed orchid cards are special. At the bottom of them, they've got six different colours of flowers. There's also five places to bid on a weed orchid card. The same rules apply when you're bidding. The majority wins. Royals overpower regular fireflies. And if it's a joint decision, then the card's going to the discard pile. However, it comes off on the day side. In this case, red has bid two fireflies. One of them's a royal, it will go to the centre. The other one returns to their hand. They win the weed orchid card. Now they have a choice. They can either plant it in their own flower bed as a regular flower and pick a colour that it's going to be but without the special ability, it counts as one flower, or they can turn it upside down and use it as a weed and plant it in an opponent's garden to stop them getting maximum points for that flower bed. In this case, if the weed is planted in this player's garden, there's absolutely nothing they can do about it because the only flower that allows you to move the weed is the orange flower. And the yellow flower can copy the orange flower's ability. So in this case, that's the end of that flower bed. That player is stuck with only five flowers. However, if the weed orchid card is planted in this flower bed, this time the player has one orange flower, a blue flower, and they've got a yellow flower in their hand. So they can choose to plant the yellow flower and sacrifice a firefly. That allows them to copy the orange flower's ability. So they can remove that weed orchid card and plant it in an opponent's card as a weed. The same thing will apply. If a player wins an orange card from the flower clock, they can plant it in the flower bed with the weed and remove the weed and plant it in an opponent's card. The game comes to a conclusion when the last card is lifted from the potting shed. At that point, the next turn happens, the sundial turns and the flowers are still won by players. At this time, the game's over. So the sundial will then turn again and each flower is resolved one at a time depending on who has bid what fireflies on the flowers. Once all the flowers have been lifted from the flower clock and are either left to the discard pile or won by players, the points in the flower beds are counted up using the score chart on the back of the special ability card. The one with the highest points is declared the winner.